Hi, this is Jonathan Hart, and we are going to look at the factory pattern now. Um, so this is where we left off with uh, the series on the strategy pattern. If you have not watched it, I would uh, recommend watching it before this video. Um, so th in the strategy pattern, we basically we broke out the go methods of our vehicle object into these uh, um, other objects called algorithm objects, and so our vehicles delegate the responsibility of going uh, to these algorithm objects. So you see here we have uh, internal protected um, guy called underbar go and we're assigned the algorithms to go uh, instead of the actual vehicles knowing about their implementations. Um, now where we left off, um, the problem with this method is um, obviously the structure. We're creating five objects and making all five of them go. Um, and in general, you do not, so it, it's common practice to declare variables at the very beginning of a method, and it's fine uh, to de be declaring the variables that the method needs to use, but all too often we also throw some new keywords uh, in here, and we often define these variables as new. Um, and not that there's anything terribly wrong with that, um, but it restricts the flexibility of this method. Anytime this method is run, it is going to always use new objects um, for everything that it does. Um, and that's just, it could be more flexible, and that's what the factory pattern does. Um, so for a little bit of housekeeping, I'm actually going to open up a new instance of Mono and we're going to start a new solution for the factory pattern. So let's call this factory pattern. And this is going to help us uh, keep all these demonstrations kind of organized and separated. And I'll zoom in so it's a little more visible in YouTube. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to separate out all of our objects into different files. So I'm going to create an algorithm file. Um, sorry, algorithms. And we're going to have a vehicles file. and an interfaces file. And lastly, a factories file. Okay. So let's get our interface here. And we're going to put it in there. And all of our algorithm objects. We're going to put in the algorithms file. And then all of our vehicle objects will go into the vehicles file. And lastly, just to make sure that we got a good copy, I'm going to copy our main class here. And let's make sure it builds. Okay, so we are good. Now, so to uh, build on this a little bit, um, you don't need five vehicle objects. You really just need the one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do an implementation where effectively we get some input from the user um, as to which vehicle they want. And then we're going to have some kind of selection logic um, to select a, si a single type of vehicle. And then we're going to make it go. All right. So we're going to declare a vehicle object and set it null. And now we're going to get some input from the user. And we're going to do that with a console statement.
and just for good uh, for good form we'll put a, a prompt so we'll say what kind of vehicle and to make this easier for processing we're gonna set it to uppercase and trim it and that's gonna make it a little easier for our comparison logics um, so we have our input so now we would want to have a selection logic we can do that with a switch statement on the input so we'll have a case for each uh, each vehicle type My keyboard is not pasting. That's awesome. Okay. I apologize. My wireless keyboard is boycotting me right now. So, menus it is. Ooh. It is really ticking me off here. So, I promise I will fix this for the next video. Okay, so we have car, truck, airplane. Helicopter and jet. So, as you can imagine, for each different input, we're going to declare this vehicle a different type. And this is the polymorphism concept at work, where you have a vehicle, and although it's declared as vehicle, it could be a car or truck or airplane, helicopter or jet. Um, so, we'll say new car. This will be vehicle equal new truck, vehicle equal new airplane, vehicle equals new helicopter, and vehicle equals new jet. Okay. And then the final piece of the puzzle here is going to be to make it go. We say vehicle go. And again, in case you're wondering, this is not the factory pattern. This is what the factory pattern solves for us. Um, so if you've been sitting here watching, wondering what the heck is this guy doing, this is not the factory. Okay. So here's our console app. And we're going to say car. And it says, look, while I'm driving, it works as we expect. If we were to say jet... We get no goose. And the obvious breaking point for this code is what happens if we give it uh, an improper input. And we get an exception. And I'm going to address that with eventually with the null object pattern. But for now, I'm going to just handle the null and say if vehicle is null. Excuse me, if vehicle is not null, we're going to go. Otherwise, snide comment walk. Okay, so now our program has a little bit of Jonathan's sarcasm. 
So you say, what kind of vehicle do you want? Uh, and you reply with gibberish, I'm just going to make you walk. So in the next video, um, we're going to show how the factory pattern um, improves um, this kind of logic and completely eliminates um, well, all of the problems associated with this.